Hi y'all, my name is Tanya and I'll be walking you through today's tutorial which is a gathered child's apron. Let's get started. There are a few things that you're going to need. You'll need your sewing machine, um, a marking pin, scissors, pins, and three, I'm using three fabrics here. This is going to be the main body of the apron and I've marked out, it's going to be 18 inches by 12 inches and you'll need two of these. So I have my half yard of outside material folded in half and I'm just going to cut out these two rectangles. Then out of our strap and binding fabric you need a quarter yard and you're going to do your strap strips are right here and then one strip for your bias binding which is two inches wide and we're going to be folding that into fourths to make our binding, homemade binding. And then this is our pocket material. So you will need one strip that is 12 inches long and then two pocket pieces. So we'll need the three pieces cut out of this, which is a fat quarter and it's just a single layer. You just need one layer of this one for the binding strips and the strap strips. I have it folded in half. So I'm gonna cut these out. Um, you can go ahead and iron them and then we'll start on our first steps. So here you'll see I have my two pockets. These are five and a half by eight. And then my one strip that is one and a half by 12. Then when I cut out these two wider pieces for my strap ties and my skinnier one for the um, binding, you'll leave this folded so that you'll end up with double layers but it will make one long piece. Um, and the last thing about cutting is I have my rectangles here that are going to be the apron going short ways and I want to round off these two bottom corners so I'm just going to use a glass, put it here, trace here, and round these corners off. Alright, let's get started. On your Janome machines, this is your speed control. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Um, and we will start with our pockets. So you'll have your two squares that are five and a half inches by eight, and then your one 12 inch strip that you've pressed under like this. So we're going to start with this, and we're going to fold it in half lengthwise, hot dog wise. So you'll have your folded edge all along the bottom. And what we're going to be doing is sewing up this side, turn our corner, across the top, and then back down the bottom. So it'll be right sides together. And then we'll sew the top three sides, not sewing your folded edge. So now you have this, we are going to clip our corners, which is clipping off this little triangle off of the top, but don't clip your threads. You don't want to get into your stitching right there. We just want to take this off. And then we're going to turn it inside out and go press this. All right, for the bottom part of the pocket, we are gonna take our two rectangles, put them right sides together so that the pretty side of the fabric are facing each other, put some pins in it so they stay lined up, and I'm gonna do the same thing that we did on our larger pieces here. I just used a cup to round off the bottom two corners. So I'll just, I took my cup, put it on the corner, traced a line and then trimmed off those little extra corners right there. And then 
I just sewed close to the edge, about a quarter inch away, all the way around here. And I just need to fix this top part and do not sew the top. So you'll just be sewing the U. Then you will have something that looks like this. I'm going to trim off a little bit on these curved edges and then I'm going to turn it inside out and go and iron it. All right, so now you should have something like this that's open at the top. It looks like a little pouch and the top of the pocket. So what we're going to be doing is putting the pocket inside of here and we'll have to gather it a little bit in the middle. You can take like a half inch pleat or so. Um, so I'm gonna try to just line this up and I'm gonna stitch across the top just to hold it. So if I make a little pleat right there in the middle, that should be about the right size to fit inside of there. have a small pleat across the top of my pocket and I'm going to see if it'll fit. Right, I'm going to have to take another little pleat to make it a little bit smaller, but I think I can do that as I close it up. So see I've put the top of the pocket inside of our little band and I'm going to put some pins in this and then go ahead and sew it closed. I've sewed very close to this bottom folded edge, so I'm catching hopefully both layers of fabric on both sides. If you gave this a really good press, your bottom edges should line up. If you need to do a second row of stitching to catch the back side, that's fine too. I'm using a thread that's blending in with this fabric, but it's probably going to contrast a little on my other fabrics. And then our pocket is finished and we can move on. Okay, next step, um, we are gonna take one of your large rectangles with the two rounded corners on the bottom. We just need one. And this is whichever one is going to have, um, if you have two different fabrics, this is the one that's gonna be on the pocket side. So you can decide where you want the pocket. I kind of like it on one side. So you can center it. I'm gonna put mine a little bit closer down to the bottom, but you don't want it too close to the edge, like at least an inch away from the edge. Put some pins in it. Make sure the edge is straight across the top, lined up with the top here. All right, and then we're gonna be sewing the U. So you start up here at this corner and we'll sew all the way around close to the edge up to here and be sure to back tack at each end here and here.
a pocket on your apron. Now you take your two pieces and we're going to put them wrong sides together. So outsides, pretty sides facing out, wrong sides together. And we're going to be sewing the U and leaving the top open again. So I'll just put a couple pins. And stay very close to the edge on this stitch. It's going to get covered up, um, but you don't want to see it once we put on our binding. So you want to stay as close to the edge as possible. So we'll start here and sew our U. And you can use a basting stitch for this um, if you would like. It's over here. If you see the number sign, that's the stitch that we're on is a straight stitch. This is zigzag, and then this is your stitch length. So I'm going to go down to where it says 2.2 is our normal stitch length. But I'm going to go ahead and turn that all the way up to 5. It's going to give us a really long stitch that will just hold these two layers together. It goes a little faster. Okay, now we are going to be putting the two large pieces of our apron together. We're going to put them wrong side to wrong side so that we have both pretty sides of our fabric facing out. And you can put some pins and we're going to be sewing a basting stitch all the way around and then we're going to be gathering it across the top. So to a basting stitch is just a long stitch length which we can change up here on the machine um, if you press on these Janome machines, if you press this button here, it takes you down to this bottom line, which is our stitch length. So when the light is next to that, it says our stitch is a medium 2.2, but we're gonna go all the way up, take it to five. And you want this top side to be your very last um, stitch that you do. So we're gonna start here. I always like to keep my project on the left-hand side. And we're going to go very close to the edge, and this stitch is going to get covered up, so it doesn't have to be super neat. You just want to stay very close to the edge. And sometimes you can do just a couple stitches at a time to get around these corners. back tack here because this one across the top here we're going to use the basting stitch to gather it so I'm going to go just straight across the top here when you get to the end See, we don't want these other strings here. So I've gotten to the end. I'm going to take it off and cut very long tails because we want to pull on these to gather it. So I usually pull the bottom thread that's the bobbin. So I'm going to grab that one and then I'm just going to pull on the bobbin thread and slide the fabric over towards the left. We can take these pins out. Just spread out your gathers, eat nice and even.
I think that looks pretty good. It's about the front of a waist. I think this one is. There I gathered to about 11 inches or so. Once you get it where you want it, you can tie your two threads in a knot so that it doesn't slide back over. Just any kind of knot here at the end to hold that in place. And we're gonna go back down to 2.2 stitch length. And we're just gonna sew over this again to hold our gathers in place. sewing pretty close to the edge here. Okay. Now we're going to add the binding to our edges add our strap at the top and then we are done. So your binding strip should be the skinnier of your two strips and you should have pressed it to meet in the center and then in half one more time. So you can start by opening it up and I like to do the back side first so I'll start on the back and then I'm put my binding face down on top and line up my edges. And we're gonna sew inside of this crease right here, the half inch mark. So if you keep your edges lined up, you can put some pins in here, line it up with the top edge and your side edge and we're gonna go all the way around. And you're gonna be sewing on this first crease line. corners you can put some pins in to help but you you don't want it bunched up on the corner it's okay if it bunches up on this side over here if it's not perfect it's okay made it almost all the way around. You'll see that this is a little bit longer than going around your apron. That's totally fine. We'll just cut that off when we're done. All right, and then we can just trim off this extra. Now we are going to wrap our binding around to our front side. It should still have its fold, so it's folded and then folded again. And it's going to wrap around the edges and give us a nice, clean, finished side. You don't have to do anything at the top, it's, gonna, it's all going to get covered up with our strap piece. So this whole thing will flip around to the front and then fold under 
and then you stitch very close to the side to your folded edge. So it looks like this. So you'll be sewing close to this edge right here. And we're gonna go all the way around with that. Okay, our last step. We are going to be attaching our waistband to the apron, um, closing it up, and then we'll be done. So you can see, as I mentioned, before I ironed this, I sewed my two long wide strips together at their short ends, and I ended up with one very long sash that I pressed in about a quarter inch to a half inch on each long side. So this is gonna be our center, and we're gonna work, start on the back side of your apron. And just like we did with our binding, we're gonna lay it down, right side down, and try to match the center of your tie with the center of your apron, which I'm going to eyeball and then put some pins. We're gonna be lining up the top edge. And go all the way to this end here where your binding is. And then we're just, we're gonna leave the edges alone for now and we're just gonna sew this across the back side of your apron here. Get this lined up. We're gonna be sewing in the fold that you pressed. And you're gonna be sewing over all of your gathers. Just make sure you keep your edges lined up and you stay right, try to stay right on the fold. until I knew I was past the edge of the apron. Now we're gonna wrap it around just like we did on the bias, um, I mean on the binding here. So you will fold it down where you ironed and then fold it down just to the stitch line, to your bottom stitch line. And we're gonna pin that and you're gonna pin all along the whole strap. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to do that. So maybe every couple of inches down here, once it goes off the edge of your apron, it's just gonna be folded in half. And put a pin. And this is where we're gonna be sewing, down along this edge. And then when we get to the apron part, it's gonna catch here and we're gonna sew all the way down to the other end. So I'm gonna take a minute and put some pins in this. Okay, so I've put my pins in. Should look something like this. So I have it pinned along this bottom edge right here. So we're gonna start, let's see. We're gonna start on this side, I think. Yeah. No, we can start on this side. Because then when we get to the actual apron part, our project will be over here on the left. So to get started on the end, you'll have about half inch folded over, your two edges pressed in and folded in half. So we're gonna start here 
do your back tack, go along this edge, and then turn, and we're going to go all the way down this long edge, going straight to the other end. to pinch it a few inches back if I don't have the pin and then just make sure I'm getting both layers and sewing close to the folded edge. And then I'll pinch my next little area. You don't want your two layers to slide or else you'll get um, waves in your waistband. Try to stay in a straight line. My thread is kind of contrasting here, so I'm making sure that your stitches are going to show. So I'm trying to make them as neat and straight as possible. until we get onto the apron here and then you guys can finish it up. So you're just gonna keep sewing and you're gonna come up onto the apron, making sure that this folded edge, like everything is nicely tucked up inside of there and that the band is covering any stitches that you have because you don't really want your stitches showing. So you are going to sew all the way down. Just keep going. You'll run off the edge of the apron right here and you'll get down to this long end and you'll close it up the same way how you started. Like this and then you're going to be done. All right guys, so I gave it one last press, just especially around the corners and down the straps. And there we have our finished apron. Oh, and be sure to trim off all your extra strings. And you are done. So cute. And it's reversible if you used a different print on your back. It won't have the pocket, but here we go. Great job.